Hi everyone, this is Bill Breeden. Welcome to my Constellation Tour series. This is Constellation Tour number one. We are going to go over the constellation Ursa Minor, otherwise known as the Lesser Bear, in the far northern sky. And I, I am uh, starting a series of constellation tours that will cover the entire sky. So what you're seeing here is the northern horizon at 10 p.m. on June 27th, 2020. I've got a field of view here showing of about 60 degrees. And for those just starting out, let me go over the field of view scheme I'm using. Okay. A 60 degree field of view simulates about what you will see with the naked eye when you look up. And a field of view, let me zoom in here a little, a field of view of about six degrees simulates what you will see in a finder scope or binoculars. And then a field of view of just under one degree is a pretty good simulation of what you see in a medium to low power eyepiece. So if you're using planetarium software yourself and you're trying to get a feel for it, um, I would recommend keeping those field of views in mind. 60 degrees or so for naked eye, 6 degrees or so for binocular or finder scope, and a degree or less for an eyepiece. So let's talk about Ursa Minor, our first constellation tour. It's located at the Northern Celestial Pole, and it's most well known for the Little Dipper. So I'm simulating a suburban sky here, so there's a lot of light pollution, but not so much that we can't see the North Star, which is right here, the star right here. It's just above the northern horizon at the same altitude as your latitude. I'm in Missouri at 38 degrees north latitude, so that puts the North Star 38 degrees above the northern horizon. So let me show you the Little Dipper, and let's get a closer look. Ursa Minor is the focus of tonight's lesson. Ursa Minor being at the North Celestial Pole is visible all year. As the Earth turns, the Little Dipper simply rotates counterclockwise around the tip of its handle. Let me show you the celestial grid. You can see that the tip of the handle is right at the celestial pole, so the whole sky turns around that point. Let me talk about the constellations a little bit. Most people believe that constellations are groups of stars. And that's sort of correct, but to be more accurate, constellations are actually areas of sky. So here's Ursa Minor here. You see this outline? The Little Dipper is in there, sure, but there are, this whole area here um, constitutes the Ursa Minor constellation. So any, any objects in the sky that are within these boundaries here are considered within the constellation of Ursa Minor. So there, there are really not, not any bright deep sky objects within Ursa Minor, but there are some double stars that we can look for. Uh, one of them is Gamma, Ursa Minoris. So let's use our search function here in Stellarium and search for Gamma, Ursa Minoris. Uh, it's the star at the very end of the Little Dipper. Let me show you. So let's go ahead and, and look at that in our finder scope. Now these red rings here, since this is my first tour, these red rings are what's called 
a telrad or telrad circles. And a lot of telescopes will have a telrad device attached to them to help you locate objects in the sky. And the outermost ring is four degrees across. So you're seeing four degrees of sky. The middle ring is two degrees. And the, and the center ring, the innermost ring, is half of a degree. So let's, let's move into about six degrees. Now this simulates a binocular view. And that actually shows Gamma Ursa Minoris very well as a double star. You can see it's nicely split here. Very, very pretty to see. If you want to see this in an eyepiece in your telescope, that's what you'll see. You will see that the two bright members of the double star are just within the field of view. And there's actually a companion star real close to to Gamma Ursa Minoris. So this here actually could be the double star. I'm really not sure. But in any case, it is a nice view. Gamma Ursa Minoris is about... Oh, this software doesn't give me a distance. I guess we don't know how far away it is. And I don't have a distance listed on my star chart. So I don't know how far away it is. So let's go back out and look at the sky naked eye again. And let's let's do let's do my favorite my favorite part of this this course and that's to make it dark. So let's go out to a dark sky site. There is a glorious view from the country. So now you can see the whole Little Dipper, and you can see a lot of other stars within the boundaries of Ursa Minor. Okay, so lots and lots of space there to, to navigate and explore. I would recommend getting a star chart and finding some objects listed there on your own. The software can actually show a lot of deep sky objects. There aren't a whole lot of them in Ursa Minor. There's only a few, and I had to really crank up the, the deep sky list to get to them. So you'd be best off probably using a star chart. So let's find, let's find another double star. And I've got listed here Eta Ursa Minoris. It looks like it's another star in the bowl, um, in the bowl part of the of the Little Dipper. So let's have a look at it through our finder here. And there's about the view you would get through binoculars or through a finder. Um, this star next to it is 19 Ursa Minoris, and Eta Ursa Minoris is also known as 21 Ursa Minoris. So through your finder here is actually a really nice view. Let's look at it through an eyepiece. And it doesn't look like that star splits very well in an eyepiece. It must be a really close double. But you have a really nice little asterism here too, to enjoy. So that is my tour of Ursa Minor. Good night and good seeing.